Hi, I'm Roger Mishrod. At Franklin Templeton Investments, we believe that citizens need to be informed about the resources that can help make higher education more affordable. That's why we're proud to support programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the Russell Berry Foundation, Bloomfield College, offering small classes and big opportunities since 1868. Barnabas Health, Wells Fargo, New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, auto insurance, homeowners insurance, and banking under the principle of stewardship. And by PSE&G, committed to improving New Jersey's economy and strengthening its communities. This is One on One. When you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? People like laughing at others, so I don't mind if the other is me. See, you go right into the character. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm bringing families together a half an hour each week. Man, I'm doing something special. And so I do feel successful. Steve Adubato here. This is the sixth day of the Montclair Film Festival. This has been an amazing festival. Great, great films, over 80 films. The one we're here looking at today, we're talking to some of the people who put together a film called Best Kept Secret, a film about uh, John F. Kennedy School in Newark, a school for young people, young adults with autism. We talked to the director of the film, Samantha Buck, the producer of the film, Danielle DiGiacomo, the, um, the person, I don't want to call her the star, but the primary subject of the film, an extraordinary teacher. Her name is Janet Mino. We also talked to United States Senator Bob Menendez, who came here. He was the one who had, believe it or not, you would say, why would a United States Senator get involved? He knew the need for this subject of children, young people with autism who are aging out at the age of 21, out of the public school system, who often go ignored after that. He knew there was a need. He helped these filmmakers get access to the public schools in Newark. We talked to the senator. You'll see him a little bit later on. Uh, these are four interviews that you'll really appreciate. But first, we want to show you a trailer, some introductory footage, footage that sets the scene of this very, very powerful film. It is called Best Kept Secret. Hopefully, it won't be such a secret after this. to visit the school, it was like, I never knew this place was here. So I said to the secretaries, when people call, I would like for you to answer the phone. You have reached John F. Kennedy School, the best kept secret in Newark. Good morning. Uh, 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 relax. Good morning. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Can I get a kiss? The hardest thing to teach children with autism is socialization and communication. Hi, Karan. Uh, shake it out! Shake it, shake it, shake it! Okay, now let's go to work. I'm going to ask you to identify the different coins, okay? What is this? <clears throat> Very good. Give me nickel. <gasps> Yay! I'm not saying it's easy. They do have behaviors. All of us do quirky things. We can hide ours better. What about the school bus? School bus. Yes, yeah, school bus. School bus. No. Wait. No. No. What is that? Uh, Hat. Uh, Thank you. I'm gonna take that one here. Robert! Tape! I need a break. And now you need a break. That's all well and good, but what about when they turn 21 and they leave?
we're going to talk about transition, and particularly since your entire class is graduating. And I'm so afraid of when he get 21, what's going to happen to him? Is he going to be stuck up in a hot room in a hot house? I don't even know where to take him. Our fear, you know, what's going to happen? End up in one of them institutions. And end up in an institution yeah. dealing with whatever. The one place that they have in Newark, they don't cater to autism at okay. all. Do they have any living programs? Oh, yeah. That is uh, private, and you got to pay. And most of our kids wouldn't be able to pay. Oh, it's private. Yeah, and then they have a work program. You know what? Can we start and just let me visit the two places? You want to no, this no, is this our is production our... room oh, where okay. we do subcontract work. I'm sorting cable wires for cable vision. It's Why just, it? it's like factory work. We're going to give them a lot. That is a family and an individual no, responsibility. But we and the know. place that you no, work is no, no, not no, necessarily no. going to provide we, that for you. You know what? Working with special children, it, it has to be something that's in your heart. I got it. Right? Yeah. I'm not a doctor. I'm not trying to look for a cure. I don't feel that I could fix them because I don't think they need to be fixing. They deserve the best life that everybody else could have. Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. We are here at one of the many extraordinary films, one of the documentaries at the Montclair Film Festival. It is Best Kept Secret. It is a uh, film about the John F. Kennedy School in Newark, New Jersey. We have the director, uh, Samantha Buck, and the producer, Danielle DiGiacomo. I want to thank you both for joining us. Tell us about the film and why it's so special. We were just talking to uh, United States Senator Bob Menendez, who's going on and on about why it's so special, but as the creators, talk to us. Well, he's very special for allowing this film to help help us help make the film happen. But What's it about? It's about aging out. Um, it's about a, a tremendous teacher named Janet Mino and her classroom of young men on the autism spectrum. They were all turning 21 at the same time and, and aging out of the school system. At 21, you're kind of forced. to a high school in Newark. High school in Newark, John F. Kennedy High School. It's a special needs public high school. It's a pretty incredible environment. And the film is really following the journey and the pursuit to find placement and a quality of life before they turn 21 and they have to graduate. And what options are out there or not out there. What made you decide? I mean, you have to realize there are over 80 films here at the film festival, and, and I always wonder, you know, as an artist, as a filmmaker, what makes you decide that's the subject, that's the teacher, that's the school? How do you do that? Um, a lot of times it's not a calculated decision. A lot of times it's sort of the direction that fate or the universe takes you. Sam had been trying to make a story about the New York City public schools. Sam meaning Samantha. Samantha, sorry. <laughs> I know her as Sam. <laughs> Samantha had been trying to get into the New York City public school system for o over a year and got shut down. Senator Menendez suggested, is a friend of her mother, suggested that we go into Newark. So we went in for a meeting. Um, they said we have this high school, JFK High School. Sam had already Googled it on the internet. Um, and they said, okay, we'll set up a meeting. A week later, we were in there, met with the principal, and she brought in Janet Mino. And, you know, the rest is history. We, we were shooting within a month. What was it, what is it about Janet, who we'll be talking to in just a bit? Janet is the subject. I shouldn't say she's the subject. She's a major subject, but the students are the subject yeah. as well. What is it about Janet that makes her so special? You know what, I, th I always say it's kind of kismet. When you meet Mino, as you will meet Mino, Janet Mino, we call her by her last name in a few seconds. You guys have a lot of nicknames for each other. We do. <laughs> <laughs> We're all tight and close yes. and family. That's what happens on um, a film, right? Independent. After two years, yeah. You're like, two years? Yeah, you're, you're family after two years. It took two years. Oh yeah, and that's nothing for documentaries. But okay. you know, when you meet Mino, the thing about it is she walked in the room and she is this, energetic, 
beautiful, charismatic woman who had this aura about her. And I, I do think it was, it was just kismet and good timing because I think at the time she had all of her guys aging out at the same time. What would you like people watching this film to take away from this film? Well, one, I, I think awareness is key of the, of? of the issue that, you know, there's millions of people on the autism spectrum, and at some point they'll turn 21, and they will age out of a system that actually takes really good care of them, the public school system, which a lot of people don't know. And once they age out, and there's about 50,000 every year aging out, there's, there's a lack of resources and programs for them to go to, so you have parents of 50,000 kids a year who are terrified of their children becoming adults and, and having to live independently. Mm -hmm. um, so it's awareness of, of that and you know we want the film also Senator Menendez is working on a bill to push forward some aging out language um, and wants to use this film as a tool so we really hope that 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 can help him. Samantha do you consider yourself a political filmmaker? Uh. Uh, no, really, I mean, listen uh, to what Danielle just said. I mean, she's talking about you know, public policy. She's talking yeah. about legislation, <laughs> talking about Washington. That's political. Well, it is political. I would say that I, I think in some aspects, yes. But I feel like the best political movies, it's all about the stories. It's all about the characters. So I think I'm someone, I go to the story and the character and the microcosm first to represent the macro. Um, so y yes and no. I think if you have a political issue, but you don't have a story that people can emotionally relate to on a personal level and characters that people can get to know and feel like there are people that they know in their lives, then, then I'm not interested. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna be as big of advocate as I could be if there's not a story. Well, here's the thing. While Janet is, is someone people are gonna be able to relate to as a teacher, mm -hmm. what about the students? I mean, what about shooting those students? What about getting into their lives? I mean, as a director, what was that like? Um, well, she was actually. I and mean, what is as a producer, <laughs> as a producer and director, what was that like? Well, as a producer, it's always scary because you have the prospect of getting people to trust you and, and gain access to people's lives and get them to open up to you. Um, and if they don't, then the film's not going to work. But we just found we went into JFK that day not knowing how the guys in the class were going to react. And basically, they just didn't notice <laughs> that we were around. I mean, they were very just comfortable. They just went about their days like, like they would normally. Mina was immediately comfortable. And their parents were just so enthusiastic about talking to us because their story hadn't really been told before. And I think that's what you find in a lot of cases. You go and start people ask, asking people about their lives, and they They've never been asked those questions, so they're thrilled to actually be able to unload and tell their stories. And as a director, those parents and those kids, what was it like for you? Well, I just feel really lucky, I think we both do, that we got to know them. Because I, I think one thing I do hope people also walk away with with the film is that they get to know these guys and see how funny they are. How they're, like, they're people. They have the most incredible and fun personalities, and I hope the film really captures that. So I feel really lucky that we've got to know them and the parents. They're just... They're really a, an incredible group of people. I, I would say the, the hardest part about making this film was, you know after graduation and seeing where people ended up or didn't end up because you know we've gotten to know them and we've gotten to love them so we on a personal level on a personal level very much so um, so the heartbreak comes from from some of the guys in the class why they've their parents have been able to find something that works a lot of them they haven't so effectively you know they have fallen off the cliff that's the euphemism for it so that's the hard part we're here at the Montclair Film Festival it would not be an official film festival if the uh, United States Senator representing this entire state, Bob Menendez, were not here. We're here at Montclair Kimberly Academy. Um, you came to this particular film. You came to this film festival. Why, Senator? Well, Best Kept Secret is is really a, an incredibly... This film. Yeah, this film uh, is an incredibly moving film uh, about uh, young adults uh, with autism who age out out of the system uh, that provides and nurtures their God-given ability to achieve uh, their potential, and then falls off a cliff. 
And I think it's, it's so poignant, and it's part of the work that I'm doing in the Senate. And I was pleased to introduce, uh, you know, uh, the producer uh, to uh, the Newark School District that ultimately, you know, centered upon a tremendous teacher who just shows you what a great teacher can do, but at the same time, the frustrations and the challenges she has as she can no longer provide the nurturing environment for those students. So it's moving. I hope it will move the audience. I hope it will be a clarion call for us to get policies that can provide a continuum of care. And of course, it's all part of, of a, a great cultural tradition here in Montclair. Senator, what is, in fact, from your point of view, the role of the arts? A film like this, but a film festival like the Montclair Film Festival, over 80 films the second year. You know, last year we had about 40 or 50, double that almost. What is the role of a film festival, or particularly a film like this, in moving not just public policy, but, but people from a social and political point of view, moving their minds, their hearts? Well, you know, I think that the film festival, of course, is a great cultural experience. It brings the community together. Maybe sometimes brings people together in a community who haven't shared in another context. So that's a great aspect of it. Secondly, as it relates to some of the films itself, particularly these documentaries, it can capture the imagination. It can also motivate people towards action, which I hope this particular film does. Uh, and it can create a social consciousness as well on some of these issues. So I think it's just a, a tremendous opportunity to bring the community together uh, in a setting in which uh, their minds will be expanded, their judgments hopefully will be affected, uh, and they'll be stronger as a community as a result of it. And finally, your message to the organizers, the funders, the volunteers, everyone who has worked so hard to make this the Montclair Film Festival, so especially your message to them from uh, the entire country. Yeah, well, I think this is uh, increasingly becoming a premier film festival in the country, not just here in our state. Uh, and I salute uh, all of the sponsors who are willing uh, to give uh, these producers, independent filmmakers, an opportunity to exhibit their work, to bring the community together, to create a great cultural experience in our state. There's a few things you can do that bring all of those powerful dynamics together. The Montclair Film Festival does all of those things. This is Janet Mino, who, uh, I don't know if I should say the star, but she is uh, the person that is featured in this film, Best Kept Secret, about John F. Kennedy High School uh, in Newark, New Jersey. Um, we were just talking to the director and the producer of the film. We talked to United States Senator Bob Menendez, who helped facilitate getting um, access to this school. Talk to folks as they look at footage throughout this program of you, of your students. What makes these students who we track throughout this time, who we follow you throughout this time, what makes your students so special? Because they're my students. <laughs> because they're part of the spectrum and I had them for... The spectrum of autism. Autism, yes. And tell folks what that really means who may not know what that means. To me, in my version, that's just they think different. Can you just uh, talk to me? Oh, they think different. Look at you hamming to the camera. I don't know, I'm sorry. <laughs> Her first starring role, and she's not even looking at me anymore. Guys, stay with me. No, it's just that they think different. Um, they have some behavior issues. They have sensory issues that causes this behavior. But once you get to know them, you will see that just like you and I. But, but here's the thing that really struck me as we were talking to the filmmakers. They kept talking about this aging out. And, and as you read about the film, it keeps talking about you're, you're on this. Um, there's a race because at 21 you age out of the system. I mean, you cannot be in a high school anymore. You, they, they're not under the care of the high school, the public school system. For many of these students who you care for on a very personal level, what are you trying to do for them? Um, for aging, I'm trying to find them jobs. I'm trying to find them different activities because on the autism spectrum, some are lower, so you know they're not going to be able to have a job but they need a facility where they can have socialization and keep on developing the skills that they've developed during school years. You don't want Give us an example. For instance, one of the students, Karan Keys. Who is it, Karan Keys? He's one of the students that we follow. He has a mom and father, so he was able to go to different um, activities and they bring him there to get socialization, plus he's in a work program, so he's able to work too. And you have another student like Robert Casper, who also on the spectrum, but he lives with his aunt. And she's not able to bring him to different facilities. And plus, Robert, um, he's my sad story because um, he comes from a very dysfunctional family. And he doesn't have the support as Karan Keys. So therefore, he was at Birchwood. And he, what is that? 
Birchwood is another place that I found um, for children who age out. But Birchwood is really for senior citizens. That was my intake. That's how they started off. And they just add um, a part for children with autism and special need children. So when I went there, they was they just beginning. So they're trying to make it as functional as possible. But Robert was just left alone. And he kept on drawn into himself and not becoming part of the world. And he just kept to himself. And that's the sad part because they just sit there and they don't have no interaction and they just by themselves in their own little world. What is it that you want the rest of us to take away from well, this film? The amazing thing that happened, what I was surprised that I got the reaction. I got response from people that live um, outside of Newark reaching in to help the children, talking about different um, programs that's out there that we wasn't aware of. I would like people to, um, people who work in the autism spectrum, different agencies, just to reach out to our families in Newark. What could in they the do? Area. What, what, what could, uh, someone watching right now, my, my sister happens to be a principal in the public school system, very much into helping in this field, but she's a specialist in the field. Most people are not. The average person says, I care, I'm, I'm drawn by this show because we're going to be showing footage again throughout this program. I want to help. What could they do? Well. First of all, they could start supporting different agencies that support autism to help get the word out, to help them find different um, resources for children that's aging out the system and support that. Um, one lady who works in the school district, she works, I don't, I can't remember where she worked, but she reached out to me, she's a speech specialist, and she know that I work with the iPads, Pro Local to Go. But she had more experience. And now mm -hmm. she's willing to come from her district into our district to help our kids learn pro local to go so they could be able to communicate more. Then I had this other guy who reached out. I'm going to visit his facility. And he does a lot of different things like preparing them job career readiness and different um, social skills that he implemented in his kids. And he had a 95% success rate for getting children who age out jobs. So that's the kind of... Um, that's the kind of reaction you get. Yes, and it's awesome. Let me ask you this. Uh, some of your family here today? All of my family is here today. <laughs> you know, again, you didn't do this to be a star. Um, you were picked. Uh, obviously, folks found you because they know of the work you're doing. What has it done for you as an educator, having this attention on the work that you are doing and the impact that you are having? And again, every story is not a success story. Some of these stories are very painful in this film. What has this done for you, this film, and the reaction to it? Um, hmm. It helped me to get motivated and stop letting fear stop me for, for furthering my things that I want to do. Fear. Of um, just getting a program started. Just the different things that you have to go with, the grant writing, the lawyers and things like that. You know, I always wanted to start my own program, but it was fear that kept me behind. And now? Now I'm overcoming that fear. Because through the documentary, um, I realized that um, I have to put my fear aside and help our students mm. to make it a better world for them and a safer place in North New Jersey. That's what I want to do. How much do you care for these kids? These, excuse me, these young adults, how I much do you care for them? I love them. They like my own. That's how I treat them. It's very personal, isn't it? Yes, it is when they don't succeed as they age out and things don't turn out the way any one of us would want, but particularly you, how hard for you? It's really hard mm. because a couple of them, I reached out, a parent reached out to me. Her son graduated three years ago and she reached out to me and I keep in touch with her and it's like heartbreaking because she was a forced to mom and because her son had behavior issues, it's hard for her to find a spot for him. So he's been home for three years. That breaks my heart. Another case who's in the film, Raha Mid, he lives with his grandma. She takes care of, she has his sister also. And Raha Mid got really sick. And she called me and she's like, you know, I can't even go nowhere, Janet. It's just because she don't have the support system mm. that she need. And it's hard for her to leave him because he's scared of trees that you see in a documentary, so she can't take him nowhere, and she's like trapped in her own house. You want to save them all, don't you? 
You yeah. do, don't you? Yeah, if I could. From, from the low spectrum all the way up to Asperger's. If I could, I would. You know you're making a huge difference. You know, a lot of people tell me that, but I've been doing this for over 20 years, and I never thought, like, wow, she's doing something special. I'm just doing what I love doing. And I just see something special in each one of them, from the lowest to the highest. They all have something to offer. Well, so do you, and that's why uh, we're very pleased that the folks who decided to put together this film, Best Kept Secret, decided to tell your secret and share it with others. There's a lot of work to be done. Uh, Janet Mino, I want to congratulate you. But as you said, um, the work is, is far from over. And um, on behalf of all of us in the Montclair community, those of us who are trying to draw attention to the Montclair Film Festival, we thank you. Um, just keep up the good work and fighting the good fight. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. We deserve the best life that everybody else can have. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence, and the Montclair Film Festival, 13 for WNET, and NJTV. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the Russell Berry Foundation, Bloomfield College, Barnabas Health. Wells Fargo, New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, and by PSE&G. Promotional support provided by The Record and NorthJersey.com, and The Star Ledger and NJ.com. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.